There are more standard tags in the JSP specification, starting with the JDBC tags. The JDBC tags give us a simple mechanism to display data from a particular JDBC data source. Use of these tags bypasses the model view controller pattern, so we should concentrate on using them only for prototyping small applications or for simple queries inside of our JSP. The logic that we'll see here using the JDBC tags should really be performed in the servlet, but this gives us a fast way to prototype or to perform simple queries inside of our JSP. There are basically three steps for using a JDBC tag. First, you specify the data source. You then perform the query, the SQL query, and display the results. Iterate through a result set if, um, uh, if that's what you want to do. And it's actually, that's the most common behavior when working with result set. So to specify the data source, the resource reference name of a data source can be specified in WebXML by creating a particular context parameter in your deployment descriptor, WebXML, and the name of the uh, context parameter is actually javax.servlet.jsp.jstl.sql.datasource, case sensitive, and then the value of that context parameter would be the name of the data source itself. Alternatively, a controller servlet can use the normal config class and the set method on the config class to set the reference name. Here we see an example of a call to that set method using the request object and using the constant SQL underscore data underscore source on the config object and setting the name of the data source reference. If the entire web module uses a single data source, it's usually easier to specify the name in WebXML. Individual queries can also specify their own data source name, but that's generally discouraged, except where you're doing very simple queries, one-off queries within a JSP. To perform a query in your JSP, use the query tag from the SQL tag library. For example, um, an opening, the opening tag for the query tag would look like this, where we're using the traditional prefix SQL underscore RT or runtime and specifying the variable uh, attribute or the var attribute to be the local variable for this query. Um, inside the body of our query tag, we specify the SQL statement, in this case, a very simple select asterisk from and the name of the table. We can also use a variation of this uh, query, giving us a little bit more power, where our select statement is actually using a standard SQL select statement with question marks um, for placeholders. So select asterisks from employee where last name is like um, this or first name is like this. And then we pass in, embedded in the body of the query tag, we pass parameters that will be evaluated and returned in the placeholder. So the first parameter would be, in this case, in our SQL statement, the return from employee name um, and employee name again, where last name is like this or uh, first name is like this. And we close our SQL query element, our SQL query tag, and embed uh, the parameters in there. The system would execute the query and save it as a result object and name it with the variable or with the value that we supplied to the var attribute, so in this case, employee list on both of these examples. After the query is performed, we generally want to display the results. The result object gets stored in a variable the variable that's created by the query tag. And the query, uh, the result object exposes a property called rows that represents a uh, database result set. The rows property is uh, specifically an array of sorted map objects. Each sorted map in the array represents a row in the database or in the result set. The map contains column values where the column names are keys. Any search for a column name value is case insensitive and is generally resolved on the database on the back end. 
Using this structure, we can then iterate the result set using our standard core tag uh, for each from the core tag library. So an example of this would be, a, uh, again, the use of the for each tag, iterating a list by specifying the rows or asking for the rows property and using that as the value passed to the items parameter and the var parameter specified to create a local variable. So um, the local variable being employee in this example embedded in our for each, we simply ask for the first name property, the last name property using our standard JSP execution language and print that out in line within the iteration. So with a closed block um, to our for each logic, within each iteration we're simply going to print out the first name and the last name. Putting all this together, we can actually create an example of pagination, simple pagination in our JSP. Opening our query tag, specifying the local variable employee list, um, specifying attributes for maximum rows or max rows and start row. Inside of our query element, our SQL query, select asterisk from employee order by first name and close our query tag. Then using a standard if tag from the core runtime library, um, our Boolean test is test to see if employee list, which was generated in a variable in the query tag, um, check to see if employee list, the, the rows property, is empty. If this test returns true, we print out a line for no match found and um, then make sure that we close our if tag. Our iteration tag um, using for each from the core runtime library. Again, we're going to iterate through using the uh, provided rows property in, uh, as a result of our result set. We'll iterate through the rows. We'll create a local variable inside of the for each loop called employee. Uh, print out the employee first name, employee last name, and um, the end of our loop block or our for each block. At the bottom of this, or beneath uh, this output, we um, set some local variables capturing the start row and adding five. We capture the previous start row um, by starting with start row and subtracting five. We're creating local variables in those two set tags. In the test, we're testing to see if previous start row is greater than or equal to zero. If so, we will print out a standard HTML href link um, pointing to our JSP um, and handling the start row values and giving us a previous link and a next link to create some rudimentary um, uh, pagination in the output of our JSP and of course closing our if. So we've got two if blocks, two sets statements um, testing to create uh, what we're writing out in the output is simply HTML href links um, to go back five rows or go forward five rows and doing some basic conditional testing. Pretty simple. Working with function tags. Function tags are new in the Java or the JSTL, the standard tag library 1.1. They're now providing tags that are invocable functions, that are essentially invocable functions. This is focusing mo mostly on string manipulation. FN tags or function tags include functions that allow us to, for example, obtain the length of a collection, uh, do some basic string case conversion for uppercase or for lowercase, uh, substring operations, search, replace, trim, that kind of thing, trim or split. There's also functions to escape XML characters where you're trying to output literal characters in XML format. Function tags use a slightly different syntax, closer to what we traditionally see in the invocation of a Java method. This syntax is now part of the expression language. To use one of the function tags, you specify the prefixed function name uh, prefix in the taglib directive, followed by various parameters that are necessary for the function in parentheses. So, for example, to get the length of a collection using the length 
function or the length tag, we would see um, the prefix fn colon length, and the function is called directly as we would traditionally see a function call or a method call in Java using parentheses. And all of this is enclosed as an expression within the curly brackets preceded or prefixed with the dollar sign. Um, so if we wanted to output, there are n number of users based on the length of our particular collection user list, we could use this. Some other functions that you might be interested in using in addition to length, there's also a contains function which returns a Boolean if the string contains what you specify as a substring. Two lowercase and you specify a string, returns a value in all lowercase, so it does a conversion for you. Obviously, there's also a to uppercase. There's a trim function, which returns a string, but removes all leading and trailing white spaces. It doesn't remove redundant spaces within the string itself. And the split function gives us an array of strings, which gets split according to the delimiter that you specify in the second argument that's passed to the function. So that takes care of um, a broad overview of the JSTL and some of the tag libraries that are available, just to get you started. Now let's go take a look at putting all this together in our application using Eclipse and JBoss. Let's take a look at how we can use JSTL, the Java Standard Tag Library, to improve the readability of our code, make it easier to read, easier to maintain, and easier to understand, especially when we're talking to our fellow team members. Let's assume that we've been asked to review some uh, web application with some servlet code and some JSP code. And we've been asked to perform what is very common on design teams, put our code through something that's uh, generally referred to as a code review. What we're looking for is examining the code um, for functionality to make sure that it's uh, executing according to our design use cases, that it's um, performing the way we want to. Um, is it, are we consuming resources unnecessarily on the server? And in a code review, we're also looking to make sure that our code is written, as many developers call it, written elegantly so that we don't have too many branches, that we don't have what's often referred to as spaghetti code um, that's difficult to understand. We're looking for um, functionality, and we're also looking for format and make sure we're following our team's design best practices. So our application starts with a servlet. The servlet is list employees, and I've been asked to uh, review this, so I import it and take a look at what it is that this servlet does. Uh, notice there's a reference to a resource, a JDBC resource, as prefixed with the text JDBC. Um, so the data source resource has to be defined, I know this, in uh, the application deployment descriptor, or the WebXML. The bulk of my code, the real meat of this application, is done by overriding the doGet method, standard servlet doGet method, and I'm evaluating this, and I say yes. Um, according to the principles of model view controller architecture and model view controller layer, I'm using the controller, in this case the servlet, to do the bulk of the heavy lifting in executing a SQL query to get results from a database. So I'm uh, using the servlet, the controller, that makes sense, to execute a query, select asterisk from employee. I need to make sure and make a note to myself that I check the configuration for that resource reference because this code is obviously using a data source. And um, that is also best practice, that you extract those sort of configurable entities such as data source and use the power of the application server to pool uh, connections to a database where you have a resource intensive operation. This is a relatively simple controller. I'm going to execute a query on a database. This all looks good to me. Um, I'm going to loop through the results that um, come from the database. I'm going to create a local uh, object. In other words, this controller is going to instantiate 
an employee list, a list of employees, and populate that list of employee objects, populate it with the appropriate values, matching the column values returned from the database. In this case, we're using first name, last name, middle initial, EMPNO, and we're loading um, the values from the database into our list of employees. So we iterate through in our while loop, we're iterating through the result set. We're creating a list of employee objects. We're on the request object, we're setting the attribute, or we're using the set attribute method to set an object, in this case our list of employees, tagging it with the name employees, and we're passing in the object. Set attribute allows us to pass in very complex Java objects. And then nothing special here. This looks good to me. I'm reviewing this. I'm calling a forward on a JSP called list employees. Okay. So that looks good. List employees is our JSP, but I just want to double check before I look at this um, that the web XML actually has a resource reference. Um, defined for this data source entry. If I open WebXML, I can open it by double clicking on the actual WebXML file. I also have a link in the uh, Project Explorer view underneath the web project for something called Deployment Descriptor. Both of these links point you to the same area. If you expand in the Project Explorer view, expand the Deployment Descriptor, you can see the organization of the Deployment Descriptor. If you double click uh, expand references and double click JDBC employee. The only difference is that by using this hyperlink in the editor, um, it should move us down to resource reference. But this particular JDBC or this, uh, sorry, this de particular deployment descriptor editor doesn't move us down to the actual resource reference area, but it does open the particular file. And we can expand in the outline view on the right-hand side of the screen. We can see that, yes, we do have a resource reference created called JDBC slash employee of type data source. So this has already been properly configured. I don't need to make any changes here. Or I wouldn't recommend making any changes here. Um, not at this point. So our uh, servlet calls out and asks the request dispatcher to do a forward to list employees.jsp. Okay, let's take a look at this. Again, we're just doing um, a code review here to look for places where uh, functionality could be better, could perform better, or it could be easier to understand and read. When I open list employees dot JSP and I take a look at this, just a first pass at this, the JSP source code is not clearly documented, and we have a mixture, especially in the block I'm highlighting here, we have a mixture of uh, undocumented, unqualified, but perfectly usable uh, Java scriptlet tags, JSP scriptlet tags, to execute Java code in line with um, JSP expressions, um, perfectly legal, a little difficult to understand here. Why is there an equal sign? If, you, if this is the first time you've seen this, if you're having to explain this to a team of developers that are relatively new to JSP, then a tag that's, you know, uh, clearly prefixed with the term JSP colon, um, I know, okay, those are standard JSP tags, but this, what is it, you know, the, it, it can become difficult. We're just looking at a simple block of code. And if this were a more complex JSP, it would quickly become difficult to read and difficult to translate. So what I would recommend is that we improve the readability and the maintainability of this code going forward so that um, JSP developers can quickly open this file and get a clear indication of what's going on. So let's make some changes. Quick changes, we're going to use our new skills in JSTL or the Java standard tag library to clean this up a little bit. Before I make any changes, just to make sure that I'm right um, when I uh, review this and make my recommendations, I'm going to create a backup copy of list employees and make some simple changes. Right now I can test and prove that this actually works to call this application. Let's do it. 
so I'm uh, running the servlet. It works fine. That's not the point. This is going to work. But what I'm targeting is making the code easier to read, easier to maintain. So let's do a sanity check, make sure it works as it functions now. We're not changing any, any functionality in the application, so we don't need to go back to the design documents. What I'm suggesting is a change that um, improves how our code is maintained, improves and, and gets us closer to maintaining design standards and a common vocabulary for our design team. So I'm going to uh, close that. Yeah, it works. OK. Uh, so functionality is fine. I'm going to create a copy of this file and uh, paste it to the web content folder. Uh, copy, paste. It asked me to rename it. So I'm going to freeze this file where it is and make my changes on the new copy so that I don't have to update the reference to this file in the servlet. So I'll rename this old. And I'll open the file and make some uh, changes that just jump out at me right away. The first thing I want to be able to do is clean up this mixture of expressions and scriptlet code that is, yes, I'm a highly technical trained professional. I know how to read this. But on my team, having to constantly explain what this is doing has become cumbersome and is counterproductive. So what I want to do, this is actually a Java for loop. I want to use the standard uh, library for each loop to iterate through the same list that I'm receiving from the controller, from the servlet. The use bean tag in this example, before I change it, is actually specifying a scope. And it's specifying the data type that I'm going to receive. I don't need that anymore because with the combination of the expression language and the uh, standard tag library, I don't need to specifically say where it is that I'm looking for a bean or an object. I can let the server determine in order where it's going to look. So I know I'm pretty sure I can get rid of that line as well. But let's start with um, getting rid of this a uh, mixture of scriptlet and expression syntax and some HTML syntax. And let's try replacing it with the for each loop. Now, I've um, gathered up the necessary entities for my for each loop so you don't have to watch me type it in. Um, so I will simply copy and paste into my JSP. Okay. Now, notice it's uh, giving me some warnings. It's saying, eh, um, items, employees. Yeah, that's fine. Um, it doesn't recognize the for each tag. And the reason it doesn't recognize the for each tag is because I haven't declared, I haven't passed the taglib directive uh, for the core tag library, or if I wanted to, the core runtime tag library. So I need to add. Yeah, OK, we need to add one line for the taglib directive. We've seen this standard t core taglib in another JSP um, for JSP tag library. So I'll just copy and paste it so I don't have to type out the URI, which, you know, I love copy and paste. Um, so I'm going to use the core runtime tag library and prefix with the traditional prefix C underscore RT. I'm going to use that in my for each loop. Notice the tool is saying, oh, yeah, OK, now, now I know where this for each thing is coming from. Um, I'm looking through something called employees, which I can see from my legacy remaining use bean tag that the ID attribute is actually employees. But in my for each loop, I don't have to specify the scope because I know that the application server is going to look for that item. The JSP is going to look for it in page scope, not there. Then it's in, going to look in request. Oh, not the, oh, it is there. It's in request because that's where we put it in employees. If it wasn't there, it would continue looking through session and then application scope. But we know we put it in request. We don't have to specify this. So we needed to add the taglib directive. Um, we can probably get rid of our use being directive. Uh, because we're not using array list, because we're not instantiating employees, because it's handled by the expression list, 
we can get rid of two more page directives to import specific um, beans. Now, of course, or, or specific Java packages. So I can get rid of those two lines of code right there. Okay. So my goal for functionality is going to be the same. I'm not adding any formatting. I'm not going to change the user interface. My only goal here is to streamline the actual JSP source code so it's easier to read and easier to maintain going forward. Let's test it knowing uh, that we have the safety of a backup of this file that was fully functioning right? Uh, before we tested our ideas um, for improvements in code review. Let's make sure that it's going to run exactly like we say it's going to run. Again, we're going to run the same servlet. We haven't made any changes to the servlet. We have, however, made changes to the JSP. Notice the server is marked as necessary to republish. So I can try republishing before I actually run the server to force it to redeploy or try and force it to redeploy. And so we're not watching the server restart. We're just watching publish. And publish takes very little time. So in troubleshooting, I always try publishing before restarting the server. Sometimes it's necessary to restart the server, but not always. Why not take a shot at something that's faster? Um, so I'm looking at the servlet. Uh, in order to uh, run this again with my new JSP, new and improved JSP, simply right click, run as, run on server. And I get the same list. So the user interface hasn't changed. That was not our goal here. Our goal was to improve the readability and maintainability of our JSP by incorporating the use of the JSP expression language and the JSP standard tag libraries.